What is up guys, Cash back again. And yesterday while I was streaming the Avengers campaign, we were talking about how story content will be handled for new heroes now that the team has shifted away from doing operations and expansions. And I think the game currently has content that would be a perfect middle ground between giving new heroes a story introduction into the game's narrative and offering new mission content for players to enjoy while leveling up the new hero. And I'm talking about iconic missions, and I'll break down why this would be the perfect approach to adding new heroes if they made a few tweaks and changes to iconic mission chains, so let's jump into it. One of the biggest complaints about Avengers has been players not really enjoying the in-game mission content like war zones, hives, and vaults. And while the story content the game offers receives the most praise, it's also a double-edged sword because while players enjoy it, that content doesn't offer rewards for fans of in-game content, and most of the single-player audience refuses to interact with anything outside of operations once they complete the latest one. Which is why the team decided to move on from that form of content, but I think the answer to this problem has been present in the game since launch. After completing the game's reassemble campaign, you're introduced to the Avengers Initiative, which offers several mission types players can choose from to continue leveling up heroes and collecting gear, and among those missions are the iconic missions, which highlight each hero individually and offers a side story focusing on that specific hero, and these missions come with unique dialogue, cutscenes, and multiple mission chains to play through. While most of these stories are concluded by the end of the final mission, Thor's iconic mission chain sets up a potential confrontation with Loki at some point in the future, which is more than likely the distant future given that the game is headed in its third year and we still haven't gotten that. But these kinds of missions offer everything you would need to bring in a new hero and would only require minor changes to make them a satisfying experience for players to play through. The lead developer spoke about how new hero introductions will be handled back in June, saying, I talked to my lead producer today about what I want to do with our next hero versus what we did with Jane. I think Spider-Man's heroic mission chain was a really good middle ground and I'd like to get back to that. That isn't a promise or anything, just what I want to get done for the next one. So for those of you who didn't get a chance to play through Spider-Man's mission chain, it starts with a cutscene introducing him to the team and explaining why he's there. And from there, you had the typical list of objectives to complete, like defeating a certain amount of a specific enemy type. And as you progress, you would get new scenes of dialogue between Spider-Man and Liz Allen at the Ant Hill. Rinse and repeat a few times, and you get to the end, and we got a second motion comic cutscene to close out his story in Avengers. Obviously, they went a different route when it came to Jane Foster's hero event, which only included the same motion comic we got in her trailer, and no additional cutscenes, and most of her story was fleshed out through the audio files you unlock by completing her mission objectives, which clearly left a lot of players extremely underwhelmed, especially those who care the most about the game's story. I think a combination of providing an iconic mission chain for new heroes, as well as having players complete smaller mission objectives like defeating specific enemies as a requirement to unlock the next iconic mission chain, which can still consist of two or more missions in total, and just have the final iconic mission end with a new boss fight against a new villain that can be added later as a separate villain sector for players to replay. I know in recent updates, the team made the decision to remove iconic missions once they're completed, and the only way players can access them going forward is by playing random quick matches, which was not a great decision in my opinion, and if they were to use iconic missions to bring in future heroes, they definitely should leave those missions on the war table for players to replay whenever they want, but they should also offer exotic gear to make players want to replay those missions to begin with. I personally never liked the original approach of having each new hero be tied to operations because that unnecessarily delays new heroes coming to the game because that content takes longer to produce. And I also really don't like the idea of tying new hero drops with in-game content like the raid because you can't even play that content with the new hero day one. But as a player who enjoys both the hero operations in general as well as the in-game content, I think applying more focus towards delivering more iconic missions in the future primarily for new heroes would be the best way to kind of bridge the current gap between single players and in-game game players because you have the option to experience those missions solo or with friends and offering a fun and engaging boss battle to conclude that story while rewarding players with unique exotics just seems like an easy win for a game that's currently struggling with negative public perception. 
These kinds of missions also are nowhere near as expansive as full-blown operations, which tend to include more complex cutscenes and require more time to craft new environments, and simply adding an actual villain should be something that can be done simultaneously while developing a new hero. I think this strategy could make bringing smaller heroes like Falcon, War Machine, or Vision to the game a little easier and less disappointing to players who really like to experience new story content. And again, this wouldn't be as expansive as the operation stories, but you do get a mission prep scene like we used to get in the X-Men Legends games, and you get a nice cutscene or two to wrap up the story once the final mission is complete. And now you have a cool new hero to level up and a fun mission to replay whenever the mood strikes you, or whenever you want to farm for gear. I'm in the camp that still wants to see a Captain Marvel expansion that introduces her and the big Kree invasion storyline, but if I can get her sooner with a cool iconic mission that sets all of that up and then the invasion comes in the form of in-game content, I definitely won't complain. But this is something I really hope the team considers as an option in the future because I genuinely think this could appeal to all the current player demographics for the game, but as usual, I want to hear what you guys think down below. Do you agree and think Icon Emissions would be a great vehicle for introducing new heroes to the game, or would you prefer to see heroes come in the same way Spider-Man arrived? Let me know down below and make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for more Marvel's Avengers content every week, and if you're interested in picking up Avengers merch, shout with fandom in and make sure to use my code in the description to get an additional 10% off. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.